Friends, you are watching The Word Exposed. Stay with me for the next few minutes, and together let us marvel at the Word of God proclaimed in today's scripture readings. A pleasant morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today we celebrate the Ascension of the Lord. The first reading recounts to us the glorious ascension of Jesus into heaven. And so St. Paul tells us in the second reading, we have hope in Jesus, whom the Father raised back to life and placed at his right hand. Then in the gospel, our Lord Jesus charges his disciples and us too to continue his work of bringing the good news to all, of baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It is also worth noting, my dear friends, the affirmation of his being truly the Emmanuel. I am with you always until the end of the age, he says. According to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will not invent new truth. The Holy Spirit will lead us to the truth that Jesus has already taught. When you have the Holy Spirit, you can speak and explore different languages to address people of different needs. Barriers and boundaries of discrimination, division, and injustice should disappear. The diversity of the gifts should not be a hindrance to the strengthening of the Church. God chooses all. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they had asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The Word of the Lord. Our first reading on this Ascension Sunday is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. The beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, which also is an account of the Ascension of the Lord. Let us reflect on the glorified Jesus as the source of our power to form community and to go on mission. The glorified Jesus, empowering us for community and mission. In the account of St. Luke, Jesus was lifted up before the sight of the disciples, lifted up in a cloud, and they could see him no more. This is, of course, symbolic language. Lifting up someone is like enthroning that someone. 
it is glorifying someone. And in the case of Jesus, in His ascension, He was taken by God to enjoy the full presence of the one who had sent Him. The Father, and as our creed says, He is now seated at the right hand of the Father, possessing all glory, authority. He is truly the Son of God. And so His ascension does not mean absence. In fact, whoever ascends to the Father now becomes more present to the world, but in a different form. The glorified Jesus now empowers His community. In what way? Let us look at the narrative. When the disciples saw Jesus being lifted up in a cloud, of course their tendency was to follow with their eyes this upward movement. And while they were still gazing up, angels spoke to them and said, Why are you looking up to the heavens? A way of telling them, turn your eyes to your world. And this is the first form of empowerment that the risen Lord, the glorified Lord, gives to the disciples. He tells them plainly that they would be His witnesses to the ends of the earth. The disciples, as we know them, were quite ordinary human beings. They were now reduced to 11. So their smaller group was a sign that someone had betrayed Jesus. The presence of the disciples was also a reminder to all of us that they remained weak that they remained sinful, some even doubted. But the risen Lord, the glorified Lord, will give them a power that they did not possess, a power that could only come from the Holy Spirit. And that first power is to be witnesses to Jesus, to be missionaries. They had to be empowered from on high, for left to themselves, they will not testify to Jesus. They might even deny Jesus again. So thanks to the power from on high, they could become witnesses. And where? To the ends of the earth. When Jesus was still on earth teaching the disciples, He sent them to the lost sheep of Israel. But now, they're empowered to go beyond Israel. They could go to the ends of the earth. So a more universal and more inclusive mission. This relies on the power that the risen Lord will give to them. Jesus also opens up a future to the disciples. Through the angels, they were assured that Jesus will return in glory will come again. My dear brothers and sisters, today as we thank the Lord for this mystery of the glorification of His Son, let us open ourselves to the power that is His gift. He shares with us this divine power. But how do we use it? It is the power for mission. It is the power to testify to Jesus. Let us not waste this power. It is a sure, certain sharing in the glory of Jesus Christ.